This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by NordVPN. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash rogue, spell it right, R-O-G-U-E, and get two years plus a month free at a huge discount, $79. You get safe private privacy. It's like locking the door in the bathroom. You're not doing nothing wrong, you're just private. NordVPN.com slash rogue. Brian, if you're immortal, what is your number one goal? Compound interest. I'm gonna be so rich. <laughs> Way to make it the most boring answer ever. Or the most Brian answer ever. <laughs> also, I'm gonna own everything. It's I'm, gonna be amazing. What are you gonna do when you're immortal? I'm gonna listen to all of the economics podcasts God, ever it's recorded. A, it's a true fact. God, you're a dad. You're such a dad. To prepare for this story that we're about to tell, I googled the names that are relevant. I was thrilled when our site, themodernrogue.com, was a primary source that came up on Google. It was incredible. I gotta be honest, whenever I'm researching something for an episode, sometimes I will come across <laughs> our own website and just think, well, I can't trust those sources. <laughs> but then I realized I didn't write any of that, so it's probably okay. Okay, so we're talking about the legend of Count St. Germain, which I'm gonna give a very hazy understanding of this. A little bit kind of like the legend of Rasputin in that uh, uh, Rasputin was somebody who would whisper into uh, politicians' ears and was allegedly very hard to kill or whatever. But in this case, you have somebody who appears to be genuinely gifted and talented, especially in musical arts and so on, who was comfortable looking you right in the eye and saying, oh yes, BT dubs, I'm immortal. Anyway, and apparently never aged. Yeah, and that's the fascinating thing. The guy was already kind of a miracle before it turned out that he might be immortal. He was a polymath. He spoke like 17 different languages. He claimed to be a master alchemist who could convert lead into gold. Okay, so everything I've heard so far is classic con man stuff. Uh, bravado, confidence, that's where the word con comes from is mm -hmm. confidence. But in this case, we have somebody who apparently has a lot of firsthand accounts of being a master of the violin and actually speaking the language. He was demonstrably a genius and everyone was in awe when they met him. So the Count of Saint Germain appears on the scene in Paris in the 1740s where he becomes a diplomat some say maybe a spy for King Louis the 15th. He's on the scene and everyone is in awe of them. He's making all of these bold claims, but he's backing them up by being a really intelligent guy who would give unending monologues at uh, dinner. So he talks a lot. He talks real good. Talks a lot, talks real good. Makes Original podcaster. <laughs> Original <laughs> the podcaster. The Count of Saint Germain. That's right. Uh, okay, so what are some of the alleged talents that he was renowned uh, for? I know music is one, languages is another. He wrote his own operas. He could play the violin and move people to tears, as witnesses would attest to. Yeah. He spoke. Him and Charlie Daniels. Him and Charlie Daniels. Maybe that's the story. Maybe he's, <laughs> Maybe that's who he is Maybe now. he is Charlie Daniels. <laughs> he spoke French, German, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, English, Chinese, Latin, Arabic, and uh, ancient Greek, and was familiar with Sanskrit. Okay, how many of those are things he said about himself? How many of them were like, we had a great conversation in Sanskrit? That's a good question. He was very big and everyone walked away going, he's actually really, really brilliant, but they didn't know anything about where he was from. Right. He was very wealthy, but he had no bank accounts. Okay, 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 okay. This is, again, another classic con man move is to present as though you don't need money, to present as though you have infinite wealth or whatever, but if you had no accounts, I, mm, this is sounding very con man-y. Exactly, and that's the compelling part of this story is that no, he wasn't immortal. That is really fascinating. What he was, clearly, was a brilliant con man. He convinced high society that he was the cream of the crop and he would talk and entertain them. Voltaire even said about him, the man who knows everything and apparently never dies. The Wonder Man. As you describe it, if I didn't know we were talking about a historical figure, I would think of the movie uh, The Master with uh, Philip Seymour oh, Hoffman, right. which was allegedly based on L. Ron Hubbard. Don't sue us, don't sue us, don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> There's one thing that was indisputable. He was an entertaining, educated guy. Yeah. Great to have at dinners, full of confidence. The confidence. <laughs> uh, that's my, my antenna go boop. Exactly. <laughs> it gets interesting in 1760 when he meets the mistress of King Louis the 15th. And he's about 45 or something like that. She is in her 80s, I believe, and she says, 
I've met you before. No, it was your father in 1710 in Venice. And he says, oh no, that was me. <laughs> and he gives her a detailed accounting of the night. He begins to graphically describe what it was like to fly fighter jets with his partner Goose back in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she says, that's impossible. That would make you like 90 years old, 100 years old. And he leans in and he says, Madam, I'm very old. And that's when the real mystery started. Okay, so very recently we did an episode of Great Night where we noticed that uh, seven years ago we had Patrick Rothfuss on and, and there's Justin. Justin looks very different. Patrick looks very different. I kind of look the same. Yeah. <laughs> but leaning into that mythology, I, I would assume that his plan is basically to add some mystique to his own character, oh, right? yeah, probably. He wouldn't tell anyone where he was from. The, the closest they could get was that he was probably maybe the son of a uh, Transylvanian noble. But that's all they knew. I, I can't believe I walked right past this. A classic of Karl artistry is to take the parts that you don't even question. It never occurred to me until just this moment to even ask, was he a count? <laughs> well, back in the day, they used all sorts of different names. It's the Count of St. Germain, the Lord of Farfignugan, uh, the King of the Mushroom Kingdom. So over the next 20 years, he bounces around Europe, right? He ends up in France, yep. where he tells everyone, hey, there's a revolution coming. He does? Yes. Okay. Uh, 15 years later, after he makes that proclamation, there was indeed a revolution. He also uh, was in Russia and apparently had a hand in Catherine the Great's ascendancy to the throne. This guy really seemed to be like a Rasputin or a Grima worm tongue, where he's the guy behind the guy all the time. And then in 1782, I believe, he dies. For reals? I knew it! This is one of my favorite parts of the article is the fact that it auto-completes. If you start to type in this guy's name, is Count Saint Germain, it will auto-complete Still alive? Yeah. <laughs> well, they say he was very pale, with a full head of dark hair, and from Transylvania. So I might have been rewatching last night the movie What We Do in the Shadows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <It's Laszlo. laughs> so over the next like hundred years after he dies. The Freemasons elected him as a representative. Oh, that's good. Anton Mesmer saw him. Napoleon was I... fascinated with him. It started a commission, and as they say, he got closer. Suddenly, all of the records that were a part of the Count of St. Germain commission yep. caught fire and burned up. Can, can, can we put him on the payroll? <laughs> <laughs> like, quite literally, <laughs> like, just to confuse the- Are you the Count of St. Germain? I don't know, but I want to issue, like, I will pay money to have checks issued monthly for it's like, oh, he's one of the best. <laughs> one of the last times he was seen was when a guy named Richard Chanfrey claimed to be the Count of St. Germain in 1972. Oh, this is one of my theories. One thing I haven't said is, is we've assumed he's a con man who says yes to a lot of things that will increase his presence, make his- shadow very long, right? But one thing we've not suggested is that he's more like the Dread Pirate Roberts, where it's an office that many people take over over time. Or like uh, 007. Like they say, 007 is actually a number of different people, and James Bond is just a pseudonym. I'm of course not saying he's immortal, right? But I am saying he was an incredible con man. I mean, that is the most likely explanation. However, I really want to believe that either it was multiple people or a cabal or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, well, here's the thing. The little pieces of fiction that have like maybe a little bit of truth in them often blossom over hundreds of years into something real. Lots of people think, for instance, that the Necronomicon is a real thing. It's not. H.P. Lovecraft invented it. I'm sorry. <laughs> H.P. Lovecraft invented it, and a bunch of other authors started using it. And right. it just kind of turned into this thing where everyone thought it was real. And so maybe it's just a shared fiction that people think, oh, you know what will be cute? If I talk about uh, St. Germain in this. So, so you said everyone noticed that you hadn't really aged much? Yes. Maybe. Would you like the secret? Maybe. With the help from the community, we can convince everyone that you are an immortal with these pictures. They can doctor photos. We can get If only Chris. we knew a master forger who could uh, get documents. Oh, yes, let's start this. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. We're gonna delete this video. It's a secret. You're all part of the cabal. You're sworn to secrecy. Brian is immortal. Let's I'm immortal. It. Let's do it.
Look, by now you know all of the very big impressive reasons to get a VPN. You know, maybe you're a political dissident. Maybe you're living in an authoritarian state. Maybe you don't want your parents to know what you're up to for whatever reason. But it's the small things that I love about a VPN, especially a best of breed VPN like NordVPN.com slash rogue. It's the little things. For example, the fact that this morning my wife and I spent like five full minutes with her completely assuming I understood what she meant when she talked about some particular set of furniture. And I was like, I don't know what those are. She's like, they're everywhere. You see the ads for them all over the place. And then finally I realized, no, I don't see those targeted ads because I'm using NordVPN. Meanwhile, she assumes that this brand is the most famous thing on the planet. I still don't even know what it was. It was awesome. So if you're like me, if you hate being pigeonholed, if you hate thinking that some company somewhere has your number, if you don't like the targeted ads, if you don't like pooping with the bathroom door wide open, Get yourself NordVPN. Best of breed encryption, thousands of servers all over the world. You are safe and protected in the loving arms of NordVPN. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash rogue, spell it right, R-O-G-U-E, and get two years for $79 plus one month free. That's like three bucks a month. Look, man, you lock the door when you go to the bathroom, lock the door while you're on the internet. It's easy. Offer and link in the description below. We did forget something early on about his claims like, oh yeah, I was there when Jesus turned water into wine. Uh, first of all, so was Tenacious D. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I want a song now. He when the with D. Jesus and his cross. He did not die in vain, no. Someone played a violin. It was the Count of Saint Germain. 